Hey YouTubers, it's 2-16-2014, feeling that this was most urgent, I went ahead and did some research. This is the Florida House of Representatives, and um, this is HM-261, submitted 2014, House Memorial. A memorial to the Congress of the United States urging Congress to call a convention for the purpose of proposing an amendment to the Constitution of the United States to provide the very law enacted by Congress shall embrace only one subject that shall be clearly expressed in its title, whereas each measure before a legislative body should pass on its own merits without depending on legislative support for other unrelated measures to achieve the required number of votes for passage. And whereas a single subject constitutional provision addresses this concern by prohibiting a legislative body from enacting a law that embraces more than one subject and whereas 41 of the 50 states including Florida have a single subject provision in their respective state constitutions and the legislatures and citizens of these states have benefited from a single subject requirement and whereas the United States Constitution is the supreme law of the United States of America touching the lives of every citizen in the several states but is missing this important provision and whereas our great country is is deep in debt and Congress is currently searching for a solution and whereas a federal single subject amendment would provide the means to limit pork barrel spending, control the phenomenon of legislative through writers, limit omnibus legislation produced by log rolling, prevent public surprise, and increase the institutional accountability of Congress and its members. Whereas it is Florida's hope and desire that Congress will be able to conduct its business in a more productive, efficient, transparent, and less scrimonious way with a single subject requirement. And whereas Article 5 of the Constitution of the United States makes provision for amending the Constitution on the application of the legislatures of two-thirds of the several states calling a convention for proposing amendments that shall be valid to all intents and purposes if ratified by the legislatures of three-fourths of the several states or by conventions in three-fourths thereof as the one or the other mode of ratification may be proposed by Congress. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the legislature of the state of Florida that the legislature of the state of Florida will all do, with all due respect, does hereby make application to the Congress of the United States pursuant to Article 5 of the Constitution of the United States to call a convention for the sole purpose of proposing an amendment to the Constitution of the United States to provide Congress shall pass no bill and no bill should become law which embraces more than one subject that subject to be clearly expressed in the bill's title be it further resolved that this memorial supersedes all previous memorials and concurrent resolutions applying to the Congress of the United States to call a convention for the purpose of proposing a single subject amendment to the Constitution of the United States and that such previous memorials and resolutions are hereby revoked and withdrawn, nullified and superseded to the same effect as if they had never been passed. Be it further resolved that this memorial is revoked and withdrawn, nullified and superseded to the same effect as if it had never been passed, and retroactive to the date of passage. 
if it is used for the purpose of calling a convention or used in support of conducting a convention to amend the Constitution of the United States for any purpose other than requiring that every law enacted by Congress embrace only one subject which shall be clearly expressed in the title. Be it further resolved that copies of this memorial be dispatched to the President of the United States, to the President of the United States Senate, to the Speaker of the United States Home of Represent House of Representatives, and to each member of the Florida delegation to the United States Congress. Going to HM three eighty one. House Memorial. A memorial to the Congress of the United States applying to Congress to call a convention for the sole purpose of proposing amendments to the Constitution of the United States which impose fiscal restraints on the federal government limit the power and jurisdiction of the federal government and limit the terms of office for federal officials and members of Congress. Whereas the founder of the United States of America provide in the Constitution of the United States for a limited federal government of express enumerated powers. And whereas the Tenth Amendment to the Constitution specifically provides that all powers not delegated to the federal government nor prohibited by the Constitution to the states are reserved to the states, respectively, or to the people. And whereas for many decades this balance of power was generally respected and followed by those occupying positions of authority in the federal government. And whereas as federal power has expanded over the past decades, federal spending has exponentially increased to the extent that it is now decidedly out of balance in relation to actual revenues to, or when comparing the ratio of accumulated public debt to the nation's gross domestic product. And whereas in 2013, the federal government's accumulated public debt exceeded $17 trillion, which is more than double that in 2006. And whereas projections of federal deficit spending in the coming decades demonstrate that this power shift and its fiscal impacts are continuing and pose serious threats to the freedom and financial security of the American people and future generations, and whereas the founders of the United States of America provided procedure in Article 5 of the Constitution to amend the Constitution on application of two-thirds of the several states, calling the convention for proposing amendments that would be valid to all intents and purposes if ratified by the legislatures of three-fourths of the several states or by conventions in three-fourths thereof, as one of the other mode of ratifications may be proposed by Congress. And whereas it is fundamental duty, it is a fundamental duty of state legislatures to support, protect, and defend the liberty of the American people, including generations yet to come, by asserting their solemn duty and responsibility under the Constitution to call for a convention under Article 5 for proposing amendments to the Constitution to reverse and correct the ominous path that the country is now on and to restrain future expansions and abuses of federal power. Now, therefore, be it re resolved by the legislatures of the state of Florida that the legislatures of the state of Florida does hereby make application to Congress pursuant to Article 5 of the Constitution of the United States to call an Article 5 Convention for the sole purpose of proposing amendments to the Constitution of the United States, which 
A. Impose fiscal restraints on the federal government. B. Limit the power and jurisdiction of the federal government. C. Limit the terms of office for federal officials and members of Congress. 2. That these proposed amendments categories are severable, severable from one another and may be counted individually toward the required two-thirds number <coughs> Excuse me. Of applications made by the state legislatures for the calling of an Article Five convention. Three, that this memorable, memorial, jeez, that this memorial, memorial, jeez, I'll get it right here in a minute, y'all. It's uh, four o'clock in the morning. I'm tired. That this memorial is revoked and withdrawn, nullified, and superseded to the same effect as if it had never been passed, and retroactive to the date of passage, if it is used for the purpose of calling a convention or used in support of conducting a convention to amend the Constitution of the United States for any purpose other than imposing physical restraints on the federal government, limiting the powers and jurisdiction of the federal government, or limiting the terms of office for federal officials and members of Congress. Four, that this application constitutes a continuing application in accordance with Article 5, of the Constitution of the United States until legislatures of at least two-thirds of the several states have made applications on one or more of the three proposed amendment categories listed above. Be it further resolved that copies of this memorial be dispatched to the President of the United States, to the President of the United States Senate, to the Speaker of the United States House of Representatives, to each member <coughs> of Florida delegation to the United States Congress. Okay, HM 625. <coughs> 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 All right. House Memorial, a memorial to the Congress of the United States, applying to Congress to call a convention for the sole purpose of proposing an amendment to the Constitution of the United States that requires a balanced federal budget. Whereas the legislature of the state of Florida passed Senate Concurrent Resolution 10 on April 21, 2010, and whereas Senate Concurrent Resolution 10 made application to Congress to call a convention for proposing amendments pursuant to Article 5 of the Constitution of the United States <clears throat> for two purposes, to achieve and maintain a balanced federal budget and control the ability of Congress and federal ex executive agencies to dictate to states requirements for the expenditure of federal funds and whereas the legislature of the state of Florida desires to conform to the single subject applications from Alabama, Alaska, Arkansas, Colorado, Delaware, Indiana, Iowa, Kansas, Maryland, Michigan, Mississippi, Missouri, Nebraska, Nevada, New Hampshire, New Mexico, North Carolina, Ohio, Pennsylvania and Texas and limit its application <coughs> to Congress for the sole purpose of proposing an amendment to the Constitution of the United States to require a balanced federal budget. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the legislature of the state of Florida one, that the legislature of the state of Florida hereby applies to Congress under the provisions of Article 5 of the Constitution of the United States to call a convention limited to the purpose of proposing an amendment to the Constitution requiring that, in the absence of a national emergency, 
the total of all federal appropriations made by Congress by the Congress for any fiscal year may not exceed the total of all estimated federal revenues for that fiscal year, together with any related and appropriate fiscal restraints. Two, that this application is to be considered uh, as covering the same subject matter as the presently outstanding balanced budget application from other states, and it is to be aggregated with the applications from those states for the purpose of attaining the two-thirds number of states necessary to require the calling of a convention, but shall not be aggregated with any application on any other subject calling for a constitutional convention under Article 5 of the United States Constitution. Three, that this application constitutes a continuing application in accordance with Article 5 under the legislatures of at least two-thirds of the states have made applications on the same subject and supersedes all previous applications by this legislature on the same subject. Be it further resolved that copies of this memorial be dispatched to the President of the United States to the President of the United States Senate, to the Speaker of the United States House of Representatives, and to each member of the Florida delegation to the United States Congress. Okay, HB 609. A bill to be entitled an act relating to Article 5 Constitutional Convention creating 1193, providing a short title creating 1191931, providing applicability created creating 11932, providing definitions creating 11933, establishing qualifications of delegates and alternate delegates to an Article 5 Constitutional Convention creating 119331, providing for the appointment of delegates by the legislature creating 1199, I mean 9332, requiring ma majority vote, vote approval in each chamber for the appointment of delegate creating 119333. Authorizing the legislature to recall a delegate and fill a vacancy authorizing the governor to call a special legislative session to fill a vacancy, creating 119334, establishing a legislative method for appointments and recalls, creating 119335, th uh, providing for the reimbursement of delegates and alternative, uh, alternative delegates for per diem and travel expenses, creating 119336, requiring delegates and alternate rel delegates to execute a written oath of responsibilities, creating 119337, providing for the filing of delegates' oaths and in issuance of commission, creating 119336. Three four, providing for instructions to delegates and alternate delegates, creating eleven nine three four one, establishing duties of alternate delegates, creating eleven nine three four two, establishing circumstances under which a convention vote is declared void, creating eleven nine three four three, providing circumstances under which a delegate or alternate delegate appointment is forfeited, creating establishing circumstances under which application to call an Article 5 convention ceases to be a continuing application and is deemed to have no effect, creating 119345, providing penalties for a delegate or alternate delegate who votes or attempts to vote outside the scope of the legislature's instructions or the limits of the call for a constitutional conventional 
convention, creating 11935, 11935 11952, establish a delegate advisory group, its membership duties and responsibilities providing an effective date. Be it enacted by the legislature of the state of Florida, Section 1, Section 1193, Florida statute is created to read. 1193, short title, sanctions 1193, 9352 may be cited as the Article 5 Con Constitutional Convention Act. Section 2, Section 11931, Florida Statute is created to read. 11931, Applicability, Section 119311. Uh, 9352 shall apply when an Article 5 convention is called for the purpose of proposing amendments to the Constitution of the United States. Section 3, Section 11932, Florida Statutes is created to read. 11932, definition is used to, in 1193, 11952, the term 1, alternate Delegate means an individual who is appointed as an alternate delegate as provided by law. 2. Article 5. Convention means a convention called for by the states under Article 5 of the Constitution of the United States for the purpose of proposing amendments to the Constitution of the United States. 3. Chamber means either the Senate or the House of Representatives. 4. Delegate means an individual appointed to represent Florida at an Article 5 convention. 5. Paired delegate uh, means the delegate with whom an alternate delegate is paired. Section 4. Section 11933, Florida statute is created to read. 11933, qualifications of delegates and alternate delegates. 1. To be appointed as a delegate or alternate delegate. To Article 5 Convention, a person must A. Reside in this state B. Be re registered voter in this state C. Not be registered or required to be registered as a lobbyist under the laws of this state 2. A person may not be appointed as a delegate if he or she holds a federal office Section 5, Section 119331, Florida Statutes, is created to read 1199, I mean 119331, Appointment of Delegates by Legislature. 1. Whenever an Article 5 convention is called, the Senate and House of Representatives shall appoint under rules adopted jointly by the Senate and House of Representatives. A. The number of delegates allocated to represent Florida. B. An, uh, an equal number of alternate delegates. 2. Unless otherwise established by the rules of procedure of an Article 5 convention it is presumed that Florida... <coughs> has two delegates and two alternate delegates designed, designated, I'm sorry, to represent the state. Three, if the legislature is not in session when delegates must be appointed, the governor shall call the legislature into special session pursuant to S3C Article 3 of the state Constitution for the purpose of appointing delegates and alternate delegates. Section 6, uh, 119332, Florida statute is created to read. 119332, appointment by majority vote of each chamber, pairing delegates and alternate delegates. 1. To be appointed as a delegate or an alternate delegate, a person must receive in each chamber the vote of a majority of all members elected to that chamber. B. At the time of appointment, each alternate delegate must be paired with a delegate as provided by a concurrent resolution adopted by the legislature. Section 7, Section 119333, Florida Statutes, is created to read 119333, recall, filling a vacancy, special legislature session. 1. The legislature may at any time recall a delegate 
or alternate delegate and replace that delegate or alternate delegate with an individual appointed under SS 1193-119352 to the legislature may at any time fill a vacancy in the office of delegate or alternate delegate with a person appointed under SS 1193-1111. I mean, she's, let me say it again, SS 1193-119352. <coughs> if the legislature is not in session, when a vacancy occurs with respect to both the delegate and the paired alternate delegate, the governor shall call the legislature into special session pursuant to S3C Art. Article 3 of the State Constitution for the purpose of appointing a delegate and alternate delegate to fill the vacancy. Section 8. Section 119334, Florida Statute, is created to read. 119334, Method of Appointment and Recall. The legislature shall appoint or recall delegates or alternate delegates by concurrent resolution. Um... Section 9, Section 119335, Florida Statutes, is created to read 119335, reimbursement of per diem and travel expenses. A delegate or alternate delegate shall serve without compensation, but may be reimbursed for per diem or travel expenses pursuant to 112. 061. Section 10, Section 119336, Florida Statutes, is created to read 119336. <clears throat> Oath. Each delegate and alternate delegate shall, before exercising any function of the position, execute an oath in writing that the delegate and alternate delegate will, one, support the Constitution of the United States and the state constitution, two, faithfully abide by and execute any instructions to delegates and alternate delegates adopted by the legislature, three, otherwise faithfully discharge the duties of a delegate or alternate delegate. Section two, section 11, I mean section she section 11 that's not two i thought it was numerology <laughs> section 11 section 11 9337 florida statute is created to read 11 9337 filing an oath of oath issuance of commission <coughs> 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 The executed oath of a delegate or alternate delegate should be filed with the Secretary of State. After the oath is filed, the governor shall issue a commission of the delegate or alternate delegate. Section 12, Section 11934, Florida Statutes, is created to read. 11934, Instructions to Delegates. 1. When delegates and alternate delegates are appointed, the legislature shall adopt a concurrent resolution to provide instructions to the delegates and alternate delegates regarding the rules of procedure and any other matter relating to the Article 5 convention that the legislature considers necessary. Two, the legislature may amend the instructions at any time by concurrent resolution. Section 13, Section 119341, Florida Statutes is created to read 119341, duties of alternate delegates and alternate delegate. One, shall act in the place of the paired delegate when the paired delegate is absent from the Article 5 convention. Two, replaces the paired delegate if the alternate delegate's paired delegates vacates the office. Section 14, Section 119342, Florida Statutes is created to read. 119342, vote cast outside the scope of instructions or limits statute of votes a vote cast by a delegate or an alternate delegate at an article 5 convention is void if the vote is outside the scope of one the instructions established by a concurrent resolution 
uh, adopted pursuant to SS 11931193352 or two, the limits placed by the legislature in a concurrent resolution or memorial that calls for an Article 5 convention for the purpose of proposing one or more amendments to the Constitution of the United States on the subjects and amendments that may be considered by the Article 5 Convention. Section 15, uh, Statute 119343, Florida Statutes, is created to read, 119343, vote cast outside the scope of instructions or limits appointment forfeited. One, a delegate or alternate delegate forfeits his or her appointment by virtue of a vote or attempt to vote that is outside the scope of A, the instructions established by a concurrent resolution adopted pursuant to SS 11931193352, or B, the limits placed by the legislature in a concurrent resolution or memorial that calls for an Article 5 convention for the purpose of proposing one or more amendments to the Constitution of the United States on the subjects and amendments that may be considered by the Article 5 convention. Two, if a delegate forfeits an appointment under subsection one, the paired alternate delegate of the delegate becomes the delegate at the time the forfeiture of the appointment occurs. Section 16, uh, section 119344, Florida statutes is created to read 119344, vote cast outside the scope of instructions or limits, statute of Africa. A statue's status of application, the application of the legislature to call an Article 5 convention for proposing amendments to the Constitution of the United States ceases to be a continuing application shall be treated as having no effect if all of the delegates and alternate delegates vote or attempt to vote outside the scope of. One, the instructions established by a concurrent resolution adopted pursuant to SS 1193-119352 or two, the limits placed by the legislature in a concurrent resolution or memorial that calls for a an Article 5 convention for the purpose of proposing one or more amendments to the Constitution of the United States on the subjects and amendments that may be considered by the Article 5 convention. Uh, section 17, Section 119345, uh, Florida Statutes is created to read 119345, vote cast outside the scope of instructions, uh, criminal and liability. A delegate or alternate delegate commits a felony of the third degree, punishable as provided in S775.082 or S775.083, who knowingly or intentionally votes or attempts to vote outside the scope of 1. The instructions established by a concurrent resolution adopted pursuant to SS 1193-119352 or 2. The limits placed by the legislature in a concurrent resolution or memorial that calls for an Article 5 convention for the purpose of proposing one or more amendments to the Constitution of the United States on the subjects and amendments that may be considered by Article 5 convention. Section 18. Section 11.935 Florida Statute is created to read. 11935, Article 5 Convention Advisory Group. 1. As used in this section, the term advisory group means the Article 5 Convention Delegate Advisory Group. 2. The advisory group consists of the following members. A. The Chief Justice of the Supreme Court, who shall serve as the chair. B. An attorney appointed by the President of the Senate. C. An attorney appointed by the Speaker of the House of Representatives. 3. The advisory group shall meet at the call of the chair and shall establish the policies and procedures that the advisory group determines necessary to carry out SS 1193-119352. 
Four, upon the request of a delegate or alternate delegate, the advisory group shall advise the delegate or alternate alternate delegate whether there is reason to believe that an action or an attempt to take an action by a delegate or alternate delegate would a violate the instructions established by a concurrent resolution adopted by the legislature under SS 1193-119352 or b exceed the limits placed by the legislature in a concurrent resolution or memorial that calls for an Article 5 convention for the purpose and of proposing one or more amendments to the Constitution of the United States on the subjects and amendments that may be considered by Article 5 convention. 5. The Advisory Group A. May render an advisory determination under this section in any summary manner considered appropriate by the advisory group. B. Shall render an advisory determination under this section within 24 hours after reviewing a request for a determination. C. Shall ter transmit a copy and advisory determination under this section in the most expeditious manner possible to the delegate or alternate delegate who requested the advisory determination. C. If the advisory group renders an advisory determination of the section, the advisory group may also take an action permitted under S. 119351, Section 19. Section 119351, Florida statute is created to read 119351, Oversight of Delegates with Respect to to instructions. 1. The advisory group on its own motion or upon the request of the President of the Senate, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, or the Attorney General shall advise the Attorney General whether there is reason to believe that a vote or an attempt to vote by a delegate or alternate delegate has a. Violated the instructions established by a concurrent resolution adopted by the legislature under SS 1193-119352 or b. Exceeded the limits placed by the legislature in a concurrent resolution or memorial that calls for an Article 5 convention for the purpose and or of proposing one or more amendments to the Constitution of the United States on the subjects and, and amendments that may be considered by Article 5 Convention. Two, the advisory group shall issue the advisory determination under this section by one of the following summary procedures. A, without notice or in an ev evidentiary proceeding, or B, after a hearing conducted by the advisory group. 3. The advisory group shall render an advisory determination under this section within 24 hours after receiving a request for an advisory determination. 4. The advisory group shall transmit a copy of an advisory determination in the most expeditious, expeditious manner possible to the Attorney General. Section 20. Section 119352 Florida Statute. Statutes is created to read 119352 Advisory Determination Concerning the Vote Outside the Scope of Instructions Immediate Upon Receipt of an Advisory Determination That Finds That a Vote or Attempt to Vote by a Delegate or Alternate Delegate Is, in viol is a Violation as Described in S119351 or in excess of the authority of the delegate or alternate delegate, the Attorney General shall inform the delegates, alternate delegates, the President of the Senate, the Speaker of the House of Representatives, and Article 5 Convention that, one, the vote or attempt to vote did not comply with Florida law, is void and has no effect. Two, the credentials of the delegate or alternate delegate who is the subject of the determination as revoked. Section 21, this act shall take effect July 1st, 2014. <coughs> <coughs> 
SM-476. <coughs> Florida Senate. Senate Memorial. A memorial to the Congress of the United States applying to Congress to call a convention for the sole purpose of proposing amendments to the Constitution of the United States which impose physical restraints on the federal government, limit the power and jurisdiction of the federal government, and limit the terms of office for federal officials and members of Congress. Whereas the founders of the United States of America provided in the Constitution of the United States for a limited federal government of express enumerated power, powers. And whereas the Tenth Amendment of the Constitution specifically provides that all power is not delegated to the federal government nor prohibited by the Constitution to the states are reserved to the states respectively or to the people. And whereas for many decades this balance of power has generally were respected and followed by those occupying positions of authority in the federal government. And whereas this federal power has expanded over the past decade, federal spending has exponentially increased to the extent that it is now decidedly out of balance in relation to actual revenue or when comparing the ratio of accumulated public debt to the nation's gross domestic product. And whereas in 2013, the federal government's accumulated public debt ex exceeded $17 trillion which is more than double that in 2006. And, wait, coding, words stricken or deletion, words underlined or additions, 11-00350A-14. I don't know what that's about. Whereas projections of federal deficit spending in the coming decades demonstrate that this power shift and its physical impacts are continuing and pose serious threats to the freedom and financial security of the American people and future generations. And whereas the founders of the United States of America provided a procedure in Article 5 of the Constitution to amend the Constitution on application of two-thirds of the several states, calling convention for proposing amendments that will be valid to all intents and purposes if ratified by the by the legislatures of three fourths of the several states or by conventions in three fourths thereof as one of the one or the other mode of ratification may be proposed by Congress and whereas it is a fundamental duty of state legislatures to support, protect, and defend the liberty of the American people, including generations yet to come by asserting their solemn duty and responsibility under the Constitution to call for a convention under Article 5 for proposing amendments to the Constitution to reverse and correct the ominous path that the country is now on and to restrain future expansions and abuses of federal power now there, therefore. Be it resolved by the legislature of the state of Florida. One, that the legislature of the state of Florida does hereby make application to Congress pursuant to Article 5 of the Constitution of the United States to call an Article 5 convention for the sole purpose of proposing amendments to the Constitution of the United States, which impose physical restraints on the federal government, li limit the power and jurisdiction of the federal government, limit the term of office of for federal officials and masters or, or members of Congress, masters, yeah, we're the slaves, they're the masters. Uh, that let me read that over again. Limit the terms of office for federal officials and members of Congress. Two, that the that these pers, uh, geez, that these three proposed amendments. 
amendment categories are severable from one another and may be counted individually toward the required two-thirds number of applications made by the state legislatures for the calling of an Article 5 convention. Three, that this memorial is revoked and withdrawn, nullified and superseded to the same effect as if it had never been passed and retroactive to the date of, of the passage if it is used for the purpose of calling a convention or used in support of conducting a convention to amend the Constitution of the United States for any purpose other than imposing physical restraints on the federal government, limiting the power and jurisdiction of the federal government, or limiting the terms of office for federal officials and members of Congress. Uh, four, that this application constitutes a continuing application in accordance with Article 5 of the Constitution of the United States until the legislatures of at least two-thirds of the several states have made applications on one or more of the three proposed amendment categories listed above. Be it further resolved that copies of this memorial be dispatched to the President of the United States, to the President of the United States Senate, to the Speaker of the United States House of Representatives, and to each member of the Florida Delegation of the United States Congress. <clears throat> Last one here, y'all. Thank goodness. I'm tired of holding this camera. Okay. Senate Memorial. A memorial to the Congress. This one's short, thank God. A memorial to the Congress of the United States applying to Congress to call a convention for the sole purpose of proposing an amendment to the Constitution of the United States, which requires a balanced federal budget. Oh, hell, they're not going to be able to balance it. I mean, jeez, come on. And it's not $17 trillion, It's more like $200 trillion or more. Whereas the legislature of the state of Florida passed Senate Concurrent Resolution 10 on April 21, 2010. Whereas Senate Concurrent Resolution 10 made application to Congress to call a convention for proposing amendments pursuant to Article 5 of the Constitution of the United States for two purposes, to achieve and maintain a balanced federal budget and to control the ability of Congress and federal executive agencies to dictate to states requirements for the expenditure of federal funds. And whereas the legislature of the state of Florida desires to conform to the single subject application from Alabama, Alaska, Arkansas, Colorado, Delaware, Indiana, Iowa, Kansas, Maryland, Michigan, uh, Mississippi, Missouri, Nebraska, Nevada, New Hampshire, New Mexico, North Carolina, Ohio, Pennsylvania, and Texas, and limit its application to Congress for the sole purpose of proposing an amendment to the Constitution of the United States to require a balanced federal budget now, therefore. Be it resolved by the legislature of the state of Florida, one, that the legislature of the state of Florida hereby applies to Congress under Article 5 of the Constitution of the United States to call a convention limited to proposing an amendment to the Constitution requiring that, in the absence of national emergency, the total of all federal appropriations made by, Congre by the Congress for any fiscal year may not exceed the total of all estimated federal revenue for that fiscal year together with any related and appropriate physical restraints. Two, that this application is to be considered as covering the same subject matter as the presently outstanding balanced budget application for other states and is to be aggregated with applications from those states for the purpose of attaining the two-thirds number of states necessary to require the, the calling of a convention but may not be aggregated with applications on any other subject calling for a constitutional convention under Article 5 of the United States Constitution. 
Three, that this application constitutes a continuing application in accordance with Article 5 until the legislatures of at least two-thirds of the states have made applications on the same subject and supersedes all previous applications by this legislature on the same subject. Be it further resolved that copies of this memorial be dispatched to the President of the United States, to the President of the United States Senate, and to the Speaker of the United States House of Representatives, and to each member of the Florida delegation to the uh, United States Congress. Let's see if there was anything else on here with links. There's a link here it shows to learn more about why a constitutional convention would be dangerous. Okay. Well, I don't understand all this myself. I mean, I comprehend what I'm reading and I know all that, but... Uh, it says it was... Okay, Virginia House of Delegates voted it down, but it's up right now for Florida. All right, let's see what this is about um, why it would be dangerous. Okay. This is going to be a long video. Okay. Beware of con con. Deep look. Hi, I'm Charlie Meadows. On behalf of the John Birch Society, we are at the state capitol in Oklahoma City. Uh, joining me today uh, is recently retired Oklahoma State Senator Randy Brogdon. Uh, next to him is State Representative Charles Key from Oklahoma City. And then on, on, further around on the right here is State Representative Mike Ritz from uh, Broken Arrow, Oklahoma. Now, welcome to this uh, roundtable discussion. And I have no so, idea who any of these uh, people Many Americans are. Uh, believe that the federal government has become too powerful. It's outside of its boundaries uh, as enumerated in Article One, Section 8 of the United States Constitution. And they're very concerned about it. It's really led to a lot of frustration. And uh, so with that frustration, they're, they're trying to find answers. They're looking for, what do we do to solve the problem of this runaway, tyrannical federal government today? And so uh, they, they're coming up with solutions. And some of these solutions could actually be, I think, real harmful to our nation and its future. So tell us just briefly, Randy, what, what is one of the most popular misguided efforts out there today? Well, Charlie, not only misguided, but probably one of the most dangerous uh, options that's on the table today uh, are legislators and politicians around this country calling for a constitutional convention. I believe it would be devastating to uh, the United States of America as our founding fathers gave it to us, but there is a move around the state to call for conventions. Uh, and it's, we, we would be much better off to, if we want to amend the Constitution, to go through the amendment process, not a convention. Um, Charles, I'm going to ask you a question now. Uh, we're really seeing this ramp up right now, this effort to call a con, con A lot of different groups, as Randy was saying there. Would you kind of just give us a little bit of the history uh, of, of the ideas for a con, con Well, yeah, it's not new. It's been uh, uh, some, an idea that's been brought up many times over the decades. It goes back to the 60s and the 70s uh, when people got concerned about the federal government growing bigger and bigger, debt problems, uh, continually going outside the bounds of the uh, Constitution. And so this is not a new idea. It's something that's been proposed for probably 30 or 40 years. Over the years, there's been a real struggle between advocates of the Constitutional Convention 
and those of us that are opposed the con to a constitutional convention. And that's created a lot of friction. Uh, what, what have the states done? What's been the reaction of the states over many years now? Well, throughout the years, there have been a lot of states that have actually called for a convention. But uh, in very recent history, and certainly here in Oklahoma, we have rescinded our previous calls for a, a constitutional convention uh, for the, th the reasons that we've already talked about. But the states are now, uh, the state legislators are getting active, they're, they're being proactive in writing legislation to rescind uh, their previous calls. And I, I would imagine there's a lot of uh, elected officials in the state houses around the country that may not even know that their state has in, uh, already called for a convention. So it would be good to rescind that this year. I think, you know, the first state to do that was uh, back in 1988, if I'm not mistaken. I think it was uh, Florida and maybe Alabama at the same time. And how many states have rescinded uh, their calls for CONCON -Con now? Uh, Sixteen so far. And uh, Oklahoma, we, we wrote legislation two years ago, and we have uh, rescinded our call very recently. Okay. Now, uh, I think it was two years ago we rescinded our call. Yet, what happened in the session earlier this year, Charlie, and uh, uh, as far as uh, maybe leadership uh, rethinking that? Yeah, how soon we forget. You know, we had some leadership that brought up the idea of, <clears throat> excuse me, calling for a con con again, and we had a discussion in one of our meetings uh, about that. It was brought up, and uh, some of the leadership had forgotten that just the previous year we had rescinded that that call for a con con. So it was quickly. Uh, 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 put down by many of the members. Mike, I want to ask you this. Uh, can we compare a state constitutional convention to perhaps a CONCON -con call from the states to amend the, the U.S. Constitution? Well, states are autonomous and they have vary from state to state. They have limitations on constitutional conventions. There are no limit limitations on the federal uh, level and they can uh, call it, they can write it, and they can destroy the Constitution that we know as a precious document. So are you saying, Mike, that if we did call a CONCON, -con, that it would be very difficult to uh, limit it and regulate the uh, a Constitution? I think histori history and historians have told us that it would probably be difficult, very difficult to uh, limit it. Okay. Charlie, I want to ask you a question now. Now, we've heard a lot of reasons as to why we need a CONCON, -con, such as a balanced budget amendment, term limits, uh, line item veto, many, many different issues out there. If, if the states were to call for a CONCON, -con, uh, how could the states set limits for such a convention? Well, th they really could not. Now, there's a lot of people that are proposing that the states could do that. And, and there's a lot of legislators that think that they could, and they could attempt to do it. But history tells us that when we've had constitutional convention in the past, that it has never stayed on the single subject or subjects that it was supposed to address. It always ventures out into many other subjects. And in addition to that, we have a host of, uh, of witnesses or, or experts, I should say, that have addressed this questions. Former Supreme Court Justices, uh, Warren Berger for one, U.S. Supreme Court Justice Arthur Goldberg, uh, such well-known uh, law professors such as Lawrence Tribe of Harvard, Charles Rice of Notre Dame Law School. One of those is conservative, one's a liberal. There's, there's Democrats, Republicans, Libertarians, conservatives, liberals, that the majority agree that if you have a constitutional convention, you may think that you can require it to stay on a single subject, but you can't. Uh, Randy, I want to ask you a question. Now, let's just say, for example, that uh, the, the proponents of a CONCON -con do win out and we convene one. Let's say it actually did a good job. Uh, is there, would there be a problem with that? Well, I think there'd be a very serious problem with it because, in fact, it would set a precedence. And I believe it would make it easier and easier to have another constitutional convention. We haven't had one since 1787, and we've rocked along pretty, pretty well. Uh, so far, and once it, once a new convention uh, is called, and like Charles said, everything would be on the table, and if everything didn't go quite the way that they wanted at that time, they could come right back and call another one, and I think we would be in danger of almost having a perpetual convention, and uh, again, that would just destroy the very fabric of our country. So would you say then that citizen activists maybe that are in organizations that are pushing for a CONCON, -con, Maybe they'd be a lot better off just working on their individual 
uh, U.S. congressman to, to accomplish something like that? Is Absolutely. that a reasonable thought? Absolutely. Yes, I think it's very important to uh, change the process the simplest way possible, the least expensive, the less problems uh, going through the process. Now, Mike, I want to ask you another question. Some of those uh, that are wanting to con con right now are referring to our form of government as a democracy. Now, isn't that a little bit revealing with... Uh, uh, some of the problems that might exist within some of the people that are calling for these uh, con cons? Well, by the inherent definition, we're not a democracy, we're a republic. And we have to realize that uh, we are ruled by constitutional law, the U.S. Constitution, which this document gives us a system to make uh, uh, the corrections, if necessary, properly and not to, to waste the precious time of, uh, of uh, those involved in the process. Let's just ask a question here that I think is real important. If there are some needed amendments, and amendments would be good, are you opposed, Randy, to amending the Constitution? I'm not necessarily opposed to amending the Constitution. I'm opposed to amending it through a constitutional convention. Uh, for example, let's say that we had a constitutional convention because uh, people wanted to have a balanced budget. Now, that sounds good on its surface, but if you do not have very specific language in the balanced budget amendment itself, saying the only, I mean, the best way to, to balance the budget is to reduce spending. If that language is not in there, guess what? Then we're left with a balanced budget amendment, and the only other option is to raise taxes. So that is much uh, better to be dealt with through the legislative process, not through a con-con. What, what are your thoughts on that, uh, Charlie, as far as, should we be opposed to any amendments? Well, there's probably very few people in this country that's against a balanced budget, and especially when you look at what the federal government has done uh, over quite a number of decades. But, you know, if we just looked at the last few years, the last 10 years, uh, people, this is the number one issue, the economic issue, the fiscal issue. So everyone is concerned about the problem we have with the federal government putting us into debt to future generations. But again, this is not the answer, having a constitutional convention. There is another way, and Senator Brogdon just mentioned that. Yeah, I think if people understood there was another way besides the constitutional convention and fully understood the pitfalls and the possible the problems dangers. with a con-con, they would get behind this other method, which has worked more frequently and, and more often through the history of our country, and get behind that effort, because I think uh, we might be able to get it done in that method. Yeah. Now, Perhaps part of that method, Mike, would be uh, changing out certain elected officials in the federal government. And in this last election cycle, we just changed out a large number of them. What are your thoughts on that? Well, that's a good point. I think that uh, what we have to look at is uh, it's a constant process of retooling the elected as well as the electorate. Uh, human nature is that uh, repetition is the essence of learning. We need to learn well the constitutions of our federal system as well as our state system to be able to make sure that our elected officials understand that. And if we do not continue to uh, elect constitutionalists to the uh, primarily the most important uh, branch, I think, is the House of Representatives because they control the money. Uh, and as a result, if we don't get people involved at a grassroots level to educate uh, all of the uh, people around them as well as the elected officials, then we've lost the game from the, from the beginning. Back to the balanced budget amendment, it's an oxymoron. You cannot have a budget unless it's balanced. And that's one of the arguments that we have to look at, whether it's the line item veto or term limits or whatever it is. Whoever is, is changing the rules and then interprets the rules, unfortunately, we know the courts are not always uh, tuned to the Constitution. And we have to realize that the states will have to take that back and initiate that in many instances and, and control it, rescind these con-con calls, and then uh, educate the electorate. You know, we, we've heard the uh, saying before that all it takes for evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing. And let's just be honest, most of us would like to live our lives and enjoy life, enjoy our families and things like that. But every generation must fight for liberty for liberty. And there's really, there's no magic bullet, is there? I mean, there's nothing outside of being involved to a certain level and holding elected officials accountable. Have you guys, your elected officials, have you had that experience 
from your constituents? You know, it's not easy. It never is easy, never will be easy, but if, if any people or any generation ever had it easier, it would be those of us here in the United States with the legacy that we have that has been left to us, the form of government that we have. We actually can petition our government. We can call and write and go see our elected officials. The problem is, is too many people aren't doing that. And if they would, it has a tremendous effect. All of us here know that as legislators, when the people come up to this Capitol building, like they have in, at the Oklahoma Capitol and capitals all over the country, in thousands, in mass, it gets legislators' opinion, and they start listening to what the people are saying. And that's what needs to happen to, to fix this problem. The silver bullet is the Constitution. I, and I love a quote from Thomas Jefferson. He said that I'd rather be exposed to the inconveniences of attending to too much liberty. In other words, he understood that, that our freedom and our liberty had to be protected and passed down generation after generation. And it's now our responsibility to do that. But we have we've become complacent. We've expected our freedom just to, to uh, come to us naturally, but it's not. We have to protect it. And uh, this is one of the things that excites me, uh, realizing that the people now around this nation, certainly right here in the state of Oklahoma, have become extremely active in this uh, uh, political process. And that's encouraging to me. Michael, I want to ask you a question here. Uh, I believe it was Vladimir Lenin, a man I have no respect for, said something I think we should pay attention to. He said, an organized minority can always rule over a disorganized majority. What we've probably seen the left do over the last several decades is organize, organize, community organizers and such as that. How important is it to, to join with others, uh, to become a member and to join with others in these efforts? Well, the last count that I saw, we had about seven birchers in the Oklahoma legislature. Uh, there might have been a few since I counted, but uh, I think we need to bond together. Uh, I've, I've been a medical missionary, I've been a military veteran, and I think that the battles are won when you join together with others of like thinking. And there's a lot of great grassroots organizations out there. Uh, the Birch Society is the granddaddy for 52 years. They've been out there educating. They have uh, boots on the ground with their uh, field coordinators and, and uh, ed the local chapters. And, and the process of their research is, is, uh, is not compared to anything that I've ever seen before. The reading is, is a sky limit. And what we have to do is continue to retool ourselves, uh, understand that there's great people that we can choose from and we can work together and uh, we can do it. We can work together and, and win the battle. As I travel around the country giving talks as well as in the legislature and in my own state and my own district, is uh, there's a lot of organizations that identify problems, but there's one, only very few in the Birch Society probably being at the top that identify solutions. And to me, if you want to uh, beat your head against the wall trying to uh, recreate the same uh, process, then that's fine, but I want to go to the sources and I want to understand how the problems can be solved. And again, as a physician, I, I don't like to treat symptoms, I like to treat the disease and cure it. And we have an opportunity now with the, the organizations now that people are aware, as Senator Brogdon, Representative Key said, we have people out there, there's a public awareness that I've never seen in over 30 years of involvement on my my process at my level, that people are really coming around, and I know what you've done, Charlie, and helping us to kind of give backbone to our colleagues in the legislature, that people are watching. And it's because of the efforts of the grassroots and the Birch Society to, to educate people. Okay. Um, Mike, I want to ask you a question. What really should be a circumstance for amending the Constitution? Well, I, when, when should we ever do that? Well, we have a term in Oklahoma, if it's not broken, then don't fix it. And the Constitution has well governed, as my colleagues have said earlier, well governed our country for over 200 years. And uh, the amendment process uh, is not a substitute for the legislative process. And as legislators, we work uh, very diligently dedicated to writing bills and trying to undo things that government has done to us instead of trying to do more things. Aren't we seeing a lot of the people that are calling for these con-cons today wanting a shortcut uh, from the work that needs to be done toward educating their personal uh, representatives uh, to uh, legislate properly? Or if there is a need, if there's some type of a problem, a structural 
problem within the Constitution. Well, you know, I think one of the goals of the Birch Society is education. And we have to educate uh, the electorate, we have to educate the elected, and to make sure that the process works smoothly to make sure that we work together hand in hand. And historically, well, they ought to send them all to school. And principles from our founding fathers and what establishes, establishes what good government is and what it's not, that's all available if we will just educate ourselves and then start working to educate the neighbors and friends. Yes, yes sir. Yeah. So, um, Charles, I want to ask you a question here. Uh, some would say that we need these new amendments in place to force Washington politicians to do the right thing. What are, you, what are your thoughts on that? Well, <clears throat> I understand that completely. I understand that because I have constituents and other citizens come to me as they come to a lot of legislators. They're frustrated and they say, you know, gosh, why don't, why don't the legislature or why don't you, Representative Key, do this or do that? Uh, we need something to force the government or stop the government from taking some kind of action. But the truth is, if the Congress, if the Senate, if the state legislature isn't following the Constitution, if it's violating it and continually violating it, passing yeah. one more act and through the uh, process of a con-con is not going to make them all of a sudden start following the Constitution. They're probably going to ignore that also. And so that's really not the answer if they're already ignoring the Constitution. So you're suggesting if we can't hold their feet to the fire right now, that passing more amendments might not be that effective? I don't think so. I think if people would put their efforts in requiring those elected officials to follow the Constitution, it'll get a lot better result. Well, I'm going to ask all three of you this question. May all three have a perspective on this. And um, well, What do you really perceive as or propose as the remedy to many of the problems we see in government, such as the need? for a balanced budget, politicians who seem to have lifetime tenure, and, and so many of the other problems today. Mike, why don't we start with you? What what do you see as the well, I carry my, solution? Uh, my little pocket constitution around when people ask me that question uh, on the legislative floor or at any type of a forum that I'm involved with, I pull it out and I'll say enforce the constitution, adhere to it. Uh, Make sure that the electorate understands what this great, precious document is all about. Outside of the whole again, send them to school. Documents that were written by, uh, by man and recorded by man and ordained by God. And I think that we need to adhere to it. You know, after the here, convention here. was over with, uh, many of those that attended the convention and others, they actually believed it was a miracle. It was a, a tremendous effort and a tremendous document that was created. There's no doubt about that. There's, Charlie, what are your thoughts on this? Well, I, I just thought of a quote from, um, I can't remember the congressman or senator that said this, but he said, when I feels the heat, I seize the light. <laughs> and, you know, what people need to do is realize the power they have in going to their elected officials and putting the pressure uh -huh. on them to do what's right and follow the Constitution. And when they do that, they'll get the results oftentimes. Those elected officials will then start following the Constitution as the people require them. And if they don't, vote them, out of, vote them out of office. Put somebody else in office. But, but Charles, and maybe Randy wants to address that. You know, that takes just a little bit of effort on our parts to educate ourselves and to inform ourselves and then to communicate with our elected officials, doesn't it, Randy? And it, isn't the reality of it is our system works really well and we just got to be more involved. What are your thoughts on that? Uh, our system does work well and the people are involved, but... The people have not been involved for a long, long time, but there is a resurgence, and we've seen it for the last couple of years uh, with the Tea Party. The people are now uh, getting involved, but the, the one thing that has been lacking for so long is the education process. Mike talked about this a while ago. Uh, the people need to educate themselves. That little document that he showed, the Constitution, the Declaration of Independence, understanding what the true rule of law is, and then use that information as we, the people, to educate uh, our elected officials. They're the ones that ultimately will be casting that vote. So uh, educating the electorate as well as the politicians is the key to all to solving all of our problems. Okay. Well, we know that there are, like I said, we've said before, that there are a lot of organizations and individuals out there ramping up for uh, this coming legislative session and the various states there and there intending to try to really pressure um, the, the various states to um,
be a participant in a call for CONCOC. And, and uh, we think that we understand how dangerous and risky that is. So, Mike, let me ask you this. What would you recommend that the citizens out here and legislators do uh, if they understand that this onslaught is coming on? What's proactive? I think the biggest thing we need to do, Charlie, is uh, legislators need to rescind the con-cons that are already out there or if they get proposed again. And then uh, informed citizens, uh, activists uh, that you work with, that we work with every day, need to encourage and educate their elected officials to get involved and to make sure that they make proper decisions to save the republic. You know, Mike, I've I've known of accounts of just a handful of citizens in certain states, and sometimes half dozen or a dozen, that have worked hard to educate their, uh, their lawmakers. It's very important. One person can make a difference. It's once said that one person has a sphere of influence of over a hundred other people your family, your friends, your fellow workers, whomever, and as a result, you can inform people at a tremendous rippling effect or domino We effect shouldn't have to, to educate sure them. Understand what is at stake is our freedom and uh, basically our form of, of living. Um, Charlie, in our earliest history, uh, James Madison uh, was just one of our founders who had strong warnings about convening a constitutional convention. and. Uh, Tell us what that quote is, that famous quote. What was the thought from the, the, the father of our Constitution regarding calling a con con? Well, it's kind of lengthy, but Madison, again known as the father of the Constitution, when he heard that New York and, and another state, I forget what it was, it might have been Delaware, was considering calling for a Constitutional Convention just you know, not too long after the original Constitutional Convention that, uh, that convened to write our Constitution as we have it today, and he was so concerned about it, he wrote a letter to G.L. Tuberville, and I'd like to read what he said. Okay. He says, if a general convention were to take place for the avowed and sole purpose of revising the Constitution, it would naturally consider itself as having a greater latitude than the Congress. It would consequently give greater agitation to the public mind. An election into it would be courted by the most violent partisans on both sides and would no doubt contain individuals of insidious views who under the mask of seeking alterations popular in some parts might have the dangerous opportunity of sapping the very foundations of the fabric itself. Having witnessed the difficulties and dangers experienced by the first convention, which assembled under very propitious circumstance, I should tremble for the result of a second meeting in the present temper of America. So it's pretty strong words for Madison. Yeah, it really was. You know, I have recently heard, uh, listening a little bit to Neil Bort's radio program, he really got on this bandwagon calling for a con, con And then some people began to call in and talk about, hey, he couldn't limit it to one issue. And then pretty soon, as he was still kind of wrestling with this idea, I'd hear a lot of people call in and say, well, we need to expand it to this. We need to expand it to that. We need to, and I, I think Bortz is now kind of backing off of that. And I actually hear him making the case now that, you know, this would really be difficult to hold down. And, and just the natural part of, of human nature is, well, let's fix this, let's fix this. And pretty soon you got a runaway convention. Mm. And that's a real problem, isn't it? Oh, yes. I mean, we, we, we'd like to think that our government works the way we learned about it in school, whether that's high school or college and they're always doing the right thing, but the truth is there's lots of special interest and a lot of individuals, many that get elected to office, that have an agenda yeah. to radically change Don't things. Don't forget about those that get paid off. No, there's no question about it. Well, those are the words of our founding fathers, but uh, actually, uh, <laughs> Senator Brogdon, uh, a more contemporary person, Judge Robert Bork, who many consider... Or those that, that ignore us. ...legal minds alive today, and maybe even in the last century. Uh, has also made some statements about this too. What, what is Judge Bork? What, what are his opinions on calling for a con con? Yeah, and, and his statements uh, are is just as serious uh, concerns as what Madison had. He said, number one, uh, you could not have a single subject uh, con con, and we've talked about that already today. And any time, you know, if we were to call a new convention, everything is on the table, including our Bill of Rights, and so. 
again, our nation, the way it's been governed since 18, 1787, would be at risk. But if you if you stop and look at the original convention of 1787, uh, Judge Bork recognized that it was actually a runaway convention. If they had a runaway in 1787, can you imagine what we would have in the 21st century? Uh, the best thing to do is to, uh, uh, if you want admin amendments to the Constitution, go through the amendment process and urge uh, all the legislators around this country to rescind their calls for a constitutional convention if, in fact, they've already had one. You know, I think probably one of the important things to understand there is we had some very brilliant men with very high moral standards that were uh, those that attended our first Constitutional Convention. Uh, today, uh, we've moved away from so many of the values and things that, that uh, were more unified at that point in time. Uh, gosh, what do you think a convention might look like now today? Uh, from the many states that uh, are in so opposition, say, to the ideas of Oklahomans, the values of Oklahomans and Judeo-Christian values. Wouldn't this be, I mean, we just wouldn't have the same caliber people there, would we? we? I don't think we have the brain trust, number one. We don't have the moral convictions, number two. Uh, and but, but the thing that we do have that, that gives me great uh, expectations for our future, we do have 50 sovereign individual states, and we are still the greatest experiment of a republic uh, that this, this world has ever seen. And we need to be governing ourselves at the state level, uh, keep uh, the federal government out of the state's business, and I think it will have a, a, a great positive impact on our, our future. Okay. Well, I want to thank all three of you gentlemen for being here today. Thank you for your service to the state of Oklahoma. Uh, I've been an activist in this state for a long time and know the legislature and the legislators as well as probably anyone in the state. And I want to compliment you three men for not only being constitutionalists, but actually believing in the high moral principles of service and good government. And I just want to thank you so much for being a part of this roundtable today. Thank Welcome. you very much. Well, that's it, folks. Carol Roberts.